Hello, and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for January 12th, 2018. This is episode 48. And today we're going to be talking about automating intelligent customer service using Microsoft Flow, Lewis AI, and Dynamics 365. Just as the regular disclaimer, as I am a Microsoft employee, the opinions expressed in the following content are my own as this is really just a community initiative. So if the title of this vlog sounds familiar, and I hope it does, it's because it was featured as Flow of the Week in December. So I'll leave you the, the tiny URL there if you're interested. And really what I wanted to do was to go in more depth into some of the parts of the solution, including Lewis AI and Dynamics 365, in order to explain this particular scenario. While I always try to go into a lot of depth when writing blogs, uh, certainly there's only room for, for so much content. So that's the purpose of this, of this particular uh, video. And certainly if you're not familiar with, that, with Lewis AI, I really hope that um, you can get something really valuable out of this content. So the scenario that we went through in that blog was essentially a customer. A customer and they have a relationship with a power company as do most people. And in this case, uh, they're gonna go ahead and submit feedback or a complaint essentially through an email. And this email, it doesn't really matter how it gets crafted. It could be just a web form on, on a particular website, or it could be an email address that a power company exposes to its customers. Now, with sending an email, um, typically you have to have someone that is going to read that email in order to make a decision about what customer service steps should take place. And the whole idea with this particular video is that we want to interpret the content and we're going to do that using Lewis AI. And the whole idea is that Lewis AI will be able to understand the intent of the customer. We can then use this information in order to intelligently route this information through a workflow that's gonna involve Dynamics 365 as we have the ability to create cases. In addition, we also have the ability to determine an escalation path. So at this particular power company, they use Microsoft Teams, they have different channels. Um, as you can imagine, a billing department is very different than a field services department. But in the case that we have high or high priority or critical events, we want to ensure that those teams have immediate visibility into the particular issue in order to address the customer. And certainly when you're dealing with power outages, especially in the winter time, as we've seen, there's a lot of uh, cold areas these days, um, you wanna be able to highlight those things as fast as possible. Lastly, once we've gone ahead and updated the dynamic CRM system, and we've had the ability to notify the different teams, we can send a, a notification or an update back to the customer, giving them their ticket number so that they're aware that someone is actually looking at the problem. So in the past, you might've had you know, multiple people copying and pasting emails doing the so-called swivel chair integration, but here's an opportunity to take unstructured, unstructured content and actually be able to derive some sort of intent as a result. Now in this, example, we are focusing on email, but that doesn't stop you from using other channels as well. So nowadays, many organizations are using social media as a way to input customer service requests and certainly using those connectors, we would have the ability to do similar functions um, using this workflow. So go ahead and change it so that it meets your particular needs. So Lewis, what is Lewis? So Lewis is a language understanding service and it allows your application to understand what a person wants to do in their own words. Lewis will then use machine learning to allow developers to build applications that can receive user input in natural language and extract meaning from it. A client application that converses with the user can pass user inputs to a Lewis app and receive relevant detailed information back. So in a good example of that would be a bot. So the whole idea here is like in the past, people may have used like regular expressions or had like a keywords list. And they're essentially like doing a hard parse around input and trying to match some sort of an output um, by doing a, essentially a lot of custom code. Well, what you're gonna see here shortly is that using the, the Lewis service, you don't actually have to get your hands overly dirty and write a lot of 
code that's brittle and requires a lot of updates. We can actually use a more intelligent way of doing this, and we'll, we'll see what Lewis can provide us. So here's an example. So we've got a customer who's sending in an email saying, why is my bill so high? Lewis will get, what's, get this input in, which is called an utterance, and it'll try to understand the intent. What is this intent of this user? Well, the intent in this case is they've got, got some sort of billing inquiry. And what Lewis can also do is detect entities or nouns. So in this case, you might have the bill is, is essentially an invoice, right? So that's something that can be detected. And this can be part of the makeup of, of an intelligent response back to the user if we so desire. So here's another example. So the customer can provide an input of my lights keep flickering. Well, the intent is that they've got a power outage. So they're, they need to deal with a, a specific power outage and we now know based upon that input or their utterance that we've got a power outage that we need to deal with. Um, if there was entities that we wanted to extract from this, it could be something such as, you know, lights or a power pole, um, things like that that we can actually detect um, through their statements that are being made. So let's now jump into the Lua service and I will give you a more detailed walkthrough of the service. So here we go. We're in the Lewis portal and you can access it by navigating to lewis.ai. And I see they've recently changed the interface. This is a little bit different than when I had built out this app back in December, but perhaps it's related to the fact that lewis.ai just went GA. So congratulations to them. Now, what we'll see is I've gone ahead and created an application. Uh, you can go back to my apps. I only have one listed here. And the first thing you wanna do is to create some intents. So what I've done here is I've created an intent called power outage. There's a default one called none, customer service complaint and billing. So I can head over here. And then what they're gonna want you to do is to provide some examples that map to this intent. So as you can see here, I've you know, put, there's a fire and a pole has fallen. Uh, there's a fire on the, on the power pole. There's a tree on the power line. My lights keep flashing, right? And then what it's done is it'll go ahead and provide essentially a confidence value. And in this case, it's 0.94. So if someone makes a statement like this, there's a, a fire and a pole has fallen, it's gonna say it's 94% confident that it's related to a power outage. And obviously you can continue to enhance this, and I would definitely suggest having more than four utterances here. You will find, especially when you start out, that the more examples you provide, the better and more accurate the service is. Initially, you might be a little bit underwhelmed, but what I would say is you have to just keep throwing more information at the service, continue to train and test it, and you will find it is becomes like magic um, once you've given it enough care. So let's just say, um, you know, my lights are flickering. We can go ahead and hit enter here. And at this point, it's saying it's, it's 0.24 confident. And if we wanted to reassign it, we could from here. But in this case, this actually makes the most sense. So we want to we want to leave it here. And what we can actually go ahead and do now is we can go ahead and actually train and train this to say that yeah okay if we have a statement that's similar to this, that it actually is related to this particular intent. And then we can go ahead and and train these things. Train train Lewis. So let's just go you know there um, a tree has fallen on the power line. We can go ahead and test, oops. And we could say, yeah, it's like 100% confident that that's related to a power outage, um, in part because we've trained it before. We can go ahead and click on inspect and we can see the top scoring intent. Um, if you wanted to reassign, we could go ahead and do that. Uh, this, this particular panel is new, so that's cool. Now let's go, um, the lights are flickering. Right, so now it's saying it is one one percent or a hundred percent confident. So it's one. It's out of it's uh, between zero and one that this is related to a power edge. Now, before recall, when it wasn't trained on this particular statement, it was 0.24 confidence, which in the Lewis world is is not overly confident. Um, but it just goes to show you that the more examples you throw at this, 
um, the more accurate your service becomes. Once you've gone ahead and trained and tested, you can go ahead and publish publish the uh, the latest model. So in this case, I'm going to publish to my production endpoint. It'll just take take a moment for that to occur. And the other thing that is ex um, is you need to know about is that you have a, an endpoint, an HTTP endpoint, right here. So I'm going to uh, protect part of this URL. But what you can do is you can actually take this endpoint and embed it in your application. Um, so you can go ahead and build a web application or C Sharp. Actually, doesn't really matter. It's REST. So it's language agnostic. You can also go ahead and use this in Postman. And I would recommend doing that where take this into Postman and actually use it as part of your tests. Go ahead and th quickly throw many different examples. As you can see, there's a query parameter here of Q equals. Um, you would put your statement or your utterance after that and continue to actually um, hammer your, your model. And then what you can actually go back to is go back to your intents and actually see, sorry, this has changed a little bit. Then you can go back and um, see statements that have been made and you can go ahead and then reassign if you want. Uh, so this is clearly a power outage. Um, so we can go ahead and just confirm that uh, my power is out. Um, yes, that is okay. My power is out. Uh, trees fallen on JSON power line. Yes, power is out. So we can go ahead and add it and then go through um, the same exercise I, I just showed you of training your model, publishing it. And as you go through this and iterate on top of this, your application becomes more accurate and essentially more useful. So when you start this out, you want to be watching for new statements that come in that customers are providing and essentially like upvote them. Um, when you feel like it does align to one of your intents. And if it's incorrectly one, then you want to actually go ahead and reassign it, go ahead and train, publish, and you know then your application becomes even more useful. So I hope that provides you with a brief introduction to Lewis and gets you excited about the opportunity that does exist with using a service like this. So now moving on, like what, how does flow fit into this? I think the idea with flow is that once an intent is understood by, by leveraging Lewis, it can then actually route and orchestrate the traffic. Uh, so you can kind of think of this if you're, you know, going to New York City and you're looking at an overwhelming subway map like this, you go up to someone who, and you ask, them you know for directions and they're going to say where are you trying to go to and you're going to say i'm going to yankee stadium in the bronx so that's your intent right and then the, the person helping you is then going to be able to give you the directions in order to get there so kind of look at flow in the same same way in the sense that the customer comes in says yeah the my lights are flashing well there's some sort of a power outage going on so flow is then going to direct that traffic over to the field services group that can actually help address your power outage scenario. Now, Dynamics 365, um, what we're using here is we're going to be using the service. I guess we could call that a module. And within service, we're going to have something called a case. So you can think of it as a customer support. So this is a great use case for Dynamics 365. You think of Dynamics 365, and at its core, or at least historically, it's been a customer relationship management tool. So it provides you the ability uh, to sell to that specific prospect. And once they sign on to your service, then they actually become an account. And there's a typically a hierarchy where you have an account and then you have contacts within the account. Now, certainly if you're doing a lot of business to business, there's you know typically one account and then many contacts embedded within that account. Since we're doing more B to C, uh, so business to consumer, um, in some cases, the account might just contain the master data for that specific person who has the power account. And then perhaps you might have supplementary contacts um, or additional people that may be able to log tickets or make inquiries as well. Uh, Dynamics 365 also provides the ability to, to provide marketing and field service as well. So this is how we're, we're using Dynamics. Um, in this in this particular scenario. 
So now let's um, let's get to a demo and see this live and in action. So, so I hope that provides you with a brief introduction to Lewis and gets you excited about the opportunity that does exist with using a service like this. So now moving on, like what, how does flow fit into this? Well, I think the idea with flow is that once an intent is understood by, by leveraging Lewis, it can then actually route and orchestrate the traffic. Uh, so you can kind of think of this if you're, you know, going to New York City and you're looking at an overwhelming subway map like this, you go up to someone who, and you ask them, you know, for directions and they're going to say, where are you trying to go to? And you're going to say, I'm going to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. So that's your intent, right? And then the, the person helping you is then going to be able to give you the directions in order to get there. So kind of look at flow in the same, same way in the sense that a customer comes in and says, yeah, the, my lights are flashing. Well, there's some sort of a power outage going on. So flow is then going to direct that traffic over to the field services group that can actually help address your power outage scenario. Now, Dynamics 365, um, what we're using here is we're going to be using the service. I guess we could call that a module. Um, and within service, we're going to have something called a case. So you can think of it as a customer support case. So this is a great use case for Dynamics 365. You think of Dynamics 365 and at its core, or at least historically, it's been a customer relationship management tool. So it provides you the ability uh, to sell to that specific uh, prospect. And once they um, sign on to your service, then they actually become an account. And there's a high, typically a hierarchy where you have an account and then you have contacts within the account. Now, certainly if you're doing a lot of business to business, uh, there's you know typically one account and then many contacts embedded within that account. Since we're doing more B to C, uh, so business to consumer, um, in some cases the account might just um, contain the master data for that specific person who has the power account. And then perhaps you might have supplementary contacts um, or additional people that may be able to log tickets or make inquiries as well. Um, Dynamics 365 also provides the ability to, to provide marketing and field service as well. So you could, for example, take an inbound case and then triage it and it could then become a part of field service as someone goes out to say, fix a power outage. You might have a pole that's been damaged. So as part of that, you, you need to um, essentially create a work order that would allow a field service personnel to go ahead and um, interact or resolve that particular issue. So this is how we're, we're using Dynamics um, in, this, in this particular scenario. So now let's, um, let's get to a demo and see this live and in action. All right, so I'm going to take over the persona of a customer who's not happy because their power is out. So I'm going to construct an email saying a tree's fallen on an adjacent power line and now my lights are out. Please send a crew ASAP. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. And that item has now been sent. Now see that we've got a running instance of our flow and we can see exactly what happened here. Okay, so we've got an inbound request, customer support request, tree has fallen on adjacent power line. So there we go, that's our email. Now the email itself is um, sent in as HTML. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is use the HTML to text action and we can actually take that HTML and just extract just the raw text because really that's what we wanted to provide to Lewis. Go ahead and we'll call Lewis can see the app ID and we would have had to provide that API key that was uh, blurred out on the Lewis portal, but that's how you would actually go ahead and create that connection, pass in the utterance text. Then Lewis is going to come out and provide a uh, essentially a prediction, right? So it's saying that the top scoring intent is a power outage. And, you know, here's the text. 
here's the score and we get more details. You know, it was 2% confident that it was a billing request, 2% confident it was a customer service complaint, and it was 100% confident or it had a, a one interval, confidence interval for power outage. In this case, I'm not configuring Lewis to detect intents, but if I did, I would see those intents showing up here. Um, here, I'm just storing a variable of the intent, the output uh, from Lewis, the intent that actually did occur. And here we're going to go ahead and list any records. Now, the records, um, we're going to be searching the accounts and the query. I'm going to go ahead and use an OData query and look for the email address one on accounts for this specific email. And this was the email that I would have sent the original customer or request from. And what we're going to find is that it was able to find my specific account, including my name and the zip code or postal code, the address, um, all of the additional information, supplementary information. So it knows exactly who I am. And next, we're going to go ahead and see if there was any results that were returned. And we can go ahead and look basically for the list records output and see if the length is greater than zero. So if it is found, we're going to head down this specific, specific path, and we're going to go ahead and create a new record. Now, this is in a loop in this case. Really, there should only be one match, and we're going to go ahead and create a new case um, based on the specific intent for the customer. So when we went ahead and listed the customer records, we now have the customer account, which is going to be a mandatory field or a field that we definitely want in order to map this correctly. Uh, we're going to say that the customer type is accounts. Now, this is where you could use context if you want. Uh, since this was B2C, in, in theory, you would have um, the person contacting you being the, the same as the account, but that mileage varies depending upon how you've configured your CRM system. We can also provide the description. So this would have been the text that was received as part of the email. And that's that's really the, the core of the information that we're going to go ahead and provide in our case. Once the case has been created, we're going to do a switch. We're going to do a switch based upon the intent. And the idea here is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that the people in the appropriate group are notified of the specific event. So in this case, we've got a, a high priority case, which is a power outage. So we're going to go ahead into Teams, and we're going to create a new post within that specific channel of high priority customer cases. And let's go take a look at what that what that looks like. Here we go, 11.28 a.m., so five minutes ago, a new power outage case was created for Kent Weir. Here's the case number, and here's the description of the issue. A tree has fallen on the adjacent power line. So now the field service lead or supervisor would be having Microsoft Teams open and be watching this and actually could see a new case has come up. Come up. So they could go ahead and assign this to a specific worker or workforce in order to go quickly address the problem. In the event the intent came back as a billing question, we could go ahead and send it to the, send it to that specific channel. Now, in the event that a record was not found, so let's just get out of here. In the event that a record was not found, what we would do in that case is, is we would go ahead and send that to a distribution group or a shared mailbox for someone to manually take a look at this and ensure that the case is created correctly and the customer is informed of this. Um, I should mention, though, that um, at the last step in the happy path, is that we do want to go ahead and send an email back to the customer. You know, so for who the person originally sent the email, indicating that their support request has been created, here's a case number, and that someone will be following up with them shortly. Um, so that's great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like inside of Dynamics 365. So here I'm in Dynamics 365. I'm in Service. I can go to Cases. Go ahead and refresh, and here we can see on January 7th at 11.28 a.m. that a new power outage case was created. 
So hopefully that gives you some ideas in terms of how you can apply intelligent customer service using Microsoft Flow, Lewis AI, and Dynamics 365. Want to thank uh, BizTalk 360 for being a valued partner of the show. Um, stay tuned for next week where Steph Jan will have episode 49. And then I will be coming back with episode 50. Uh, so it is interesting. We've been doing this just over a year. And so we certainly appreciate you watching and uh, hopefully that you're enjoying the, the content that we're providing you. All right. Thanks and take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. Been sick with the pin since I was 10 inches tall I'm relentless, you guessed it Packed with a vengeance In a set list, every sentence So raw, you can sense it No question, trying to be the best that Ever walked this surge If I'm not, then I'm next up Dressed up like I'm about to hit a bag or something Yeah, I ain't not the one